Well, I want to acknowledge um, panelists uh, here. You've got a, a really tremendous group before you, and look forward to the discussion after. I also want to acknowledge the Coast Salish peoples um, whose territories that we're meeting on today. Um, I want to begin with a cartoon, not to make light of the subject, and uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's not, it's it's not directly on site C, but I want to make the point that. Um, well, we're going to talk a lot about hard numbers, and I think you've, you've just heard um, some of the analysis. Site C is, was a political decision, is a political decision. I'd say that for the sector that I represent in, in the situation in British Columbia, it too is, is driven by politics. And I'm not saying that, that that's bad. That's, that's the system that we have. Now, it needs to be driven by facts. It needs to be driven by facts that are debated and discussed, and hence... The punchline, I guess, that you're going to keep hearing is that it should have gone to uh, a review process, and that we in this province have the BC Utilities Commission. Any situation of a monopoly, the quid pro quo is that there is an independent regulator. We have that here, and hasn't been utilized. I wanted to give you a sense of the sector that I represent, and the, the details are too hard for you to read. I just want to give you a, a sense of the scatter and the color breakdown will give you uh, the sense that the clean energy sector that I represent, the private sector, is here on the landscape. It's tried and true. It's tested. These projects are operating, contributing to the grid uh, in British Columbia, and it's a, a mix of run of river, some storage projects, it's wind, it's some small wind, some larger wind, it's biomass, biogas. Um, people ask me, how come there isn't geothermal? Commercially. How come there's only one very small solar? It's because these are competitively procured. There is no feed-in tariff program in British Columbia. Something that some people would say is a weakness. But a feed-in tariff means that you're subsidizing. And that's something that the membership that I represent feels that this should be competitive. And it should be, from a price point of view, it, that's the way, that's the principle that should be adhered to. And that's what that's what we have in British Columbia. And so through the, the recent uh, power calls, small hydro has won out. If you were to do a power call today, wind would dominate. If you did a power call probably in 10 years' time, solar may indeed come to the surface. But through that, you'll also see probably geothermal coming on and maybe some ocean and wave technologies. The point is, the clean energy sector is alive, it's doing well, it's operating, and it's making a significant contribution depending on who you talk to. I know the government likes to use the the percentage, 25% of the power comes from Paul's sector, the IPP sector. It needs to be um, teased out a little bit. About 14% comes from my members. The balance comes from large industries like uh, pulp and paper, forestry, mining, who produce power and sell back to BC Hydro. So to, uh, uh, to the point raised about um, industrial rate power at uh, less, less than six cents, uh, some of these companies are uh, getting that power at less than six cents and they're selling it back to the grid at whatever their contract price is, anywhere between nine and twelve. Next. And that's not necessarily criticism. I, you know, we can get into discussion about kind of the industrial history of the province and why we have heritage rate power. The problem is we're not creating heritage rate power anymore, not, at least not at that price. If you recall the scatter diagram of the operating projects that we have in British Columbia, I want you to compare to the scatter diagram of the location of First Nations in BC. I'm really proud that our sector, these are the members that we represent, work very well with First Nations. We're not perfect. Develop, all developments have an impact, but the private sector uh, renewable uh, industry in British Columbia works very well with First Nations. And I can give you a couple of dozen <laughs> cases. Here's one example of the Seashell First Nation. Uh, in front of a powerhouse uh, shaped in the form of a longhouse at Seashelt Creek. Um, there's a two-headed uh, sea serpent from that area. And, you know, this was a, a ceremony marking not so much the power project, but the return, of, a robust return of pink salmon three years ago uh, at Seashelt Creek. That creek was down to about a dozen mating pair of pinks, Largely the result or the, the result of the impacts of the forest sector. And it's not here to I'm not here to criticize forestry, but <coughs> forest practices back then weren't so good. I, you know, between the Seashell First Nation and the power generator here, when I was up there, the return was over 120,000 pink salmon. They're that resilient. 
and I think the seashell take great pride in saying, we can be partners in power production, and we can be partners in bringing salmon back and um, protecting the environment. <coughs> um, numbers. A comment I want to make, back to the first um, uh, diagram, or the, uh, the cartoon I showed, is that this industry, writ large, including my sector, is for, I made the statement that it's, it's all political. We can talk about physical construction of power projects, but what we're really talking about is social construction. And, and we, all through 2014, had a significant engagement with the government of British Columbia. We met regularly. We had uh, non-disclosure agreements. We paid a lot of money for a company called London Economics out of Boston and Toronto to do an analysis, a portfolio, <coughs> the UEC. We, we got the Ventex model, everything going with BC Hydro. And um, the summary here, and the numbers have changed through time. This is 2014 in the summer. And you can see that Site C comes out at about 22 bucks a megawatt hour, and that uh, London Economics Clean Portfolio comes in at 85. What are the significant features here? We conceded that the weighted, co weighted average cost of capital for BC Hydro would be cheaper than the weighted average cost of capital for the private sector projects. Um, we, the way we did this was that we would produce our information, they would come back, they would counter. And, and we would go at it. I guess part of my, 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 my point here is that there are lots of numbers, and we can throw them back and forth. We do need some independent review of these because everybody has their own numbers. Next slide. I guess the key here, uh, and I won't go into the details of the background, was that in our projections back then, based on those numbers, is that you could save up almost a billion dollars if you'd gone with a clean portfolio clean portfolio, and this is key, drawn from BC Hydro's resource option database. So the, the wind projects, the run of river, the uh, firming and shaping gas peaker if needed, all came out of BC Hydro's data. Next. Something else I want to, uh, and this is kind of a side comment, but um, uh, our industry takes a real bad rap that we're, we're the culprits in driving up the cost of your electricity rates. Well, I wanted to point out that we're not, and this comes out of the same RRA type data that uh, Karen mentioned, looking back at previous uh, revenue requirements. What's driving the cost between 2007 and 2016? 53% of it is capital charges, 31% is operating. When I talk about capital, that's refurbishment, that's Ruskin, that's Hart. Um, uh, on the operating side, it's um, equipment and, and things like that. Salaries, the operating expenses of BC Hydro. In the 5%, a slice of that is the purchase of IPPs. We're less than 5%. Now, is that going to increase through time? Certainly it will because there, there's a, a, a contractual obligation for more power to come on from the IPP sector. But the proportions aren't going to change. What's driving your rates are the capital charges and the operating expenses of BC Hydro. And again, I don't say that in criticism. I mean, capital refer, for refurbishment is required. Um, the, the government's three parties passed. Have let, uh, have, have let this slide, and so they need to be refurbished if we're going to keep the capacity we have. But my point is that we're, as the private sector, not driving up your electricity rates in this province. Those are competitively procured um, um, contracts. Next. So, case for clean and renewables, I think the message here is that if government had not done Site C, our industry could have stepped up and done this uh, at cost competitively. We're a sector that knows British Columbia. You have here, some people don't like this comment, but I'll say this, you have here in our membership some of the largest power, independent power producers in the world. GDF, Suez, NG, uh, EDF, EDF. These are world players. My point is they know what they're doing. And their cost of capital actually in some cases is about the same as what BC Hydro would be. And BC Hydro would be a small company compared to some of these companies. So we, we can do this. We can do it cost effectively. We, could, we would do it with First Nations. Um, every one of the major projects that we have, uh, have have been done with First Nation involvement. And in fact, some of the ownership structure uh, is, and not just a tiny part of the ownership, like Kanaka Bar and uh, Interjex, is a 50-50 ownership sharing. The project with Brookfield Renewables, the Kokish on northern Vancouver Island, is a 25-75 and so forth. And First Nations are developers in their own rights. The, 
the Pechisat, the uh, Takuru Klingit, they are the developers of their own projects. And why? And why do we have this partnership? Because despite impacts that we have, a first principle that our, in, our industry at, at, uh, abides by is protect the environment. It's the environment that's the fuel. Why would we not protect the environment? Build legacy infrastructure. I can unpack that a little bit more later. And it's about sustainable economic development. Procured competitively. And, it, and it's, it's not a knock on BC Hydro. We have a tremendous battery. We have a tremendous capacity system. That's what enables the intermittent variables. We have. We have the envy of North America in terms of the system we have. So that's my case for renewables. Thanks very much. Great.